Hey guys, how's it going? I'm UberBoober, and I'm going to be bringing you another StarCraft 2 replay between OGS the win, the blue Zerg in the 3 o'clock position, and Tester, currently known as TSL's SKS, in the, what is that, 7 o'clock position? And uh, before the, this game gets going, I want to throw some shoutouts to some great people. Reddit, Dash R Dash StarCraft, you guys are awesome. I posted my first shoutcast on there to get some feedback, and it was a lot, it was way better than I expected. You guys gave me some great, great constructive feedback, and I, what I'm going to try and do is work that feedback into these shoutcasts and try and improve my game tremendously. So currently we can see Tester is definitely going for the macro game, throwing down this pylon right outside his natural so that he can... Uh, probably try and wall this off very early and this is a, this is a little bit weird to me because he doesn't scout before he throws this pylon down so he doesn't know if he's in cross positions or if he's in near positions and this wall is fairly dangerous in close proximity luckily for tester he is in cross positions with OGS the wind OGS the wind of course currently the OGS uh, uh, coach and captain of the team so OGS the win, definitely a fantastic player, along with Tester. This is going to be a great game. This is a th this is the first match of three that these played in a best of three. So we see a normal build coming out from OGS the Wind. Uh, looks like actually that was a fairly quick hatchery, or not hatchery, a uh, spawning pool. That was a tin pool, which is. Uh, very quick. Now Tester is going to be able to scout this and see exactly this pull timing and he's going to know a lot about the wind strategy. Now we can obviously see he's going down f he's putting down a forge first. Now this is very very interesting because this forge uh, normally a Protoss walling in would put a gateway down first then a cyber core then a forge but he is going very turtle heavy and I don't know if I exactly like this, especially on Lost Temple, because let me show you what I mean. This natural, fairly easy to defend. You can wall this off in maybe three or four minutes of game time. But this entire unvisioned area, I guess I'd call it, is just completely vulnerable to drops and tons of stuff. And it takes a quite a bit of time to get absolute vision on all of this. So, the wind could very easily uh, get overlord drops, or he could get mutas and just absolutely destroy this mineral line because all of Tester's defenses are going to be right here at this front. And he's going for an extremely early, early cannon. I don't exactly like this wall in right here either. I mean, it's the, it's the nearest choke, it's, or it's the smallest choke on the natural but most people m most of the time what people will do they'll put a pylon right here or right here a gateway right here that way you can wall it in immediately with your nexus and this this is just gonna take so much longer to wall in than it normally would and so what you do is you put a pylon here a gateway here and a cannon right in this corner and and that would protect you from pretty much any ling harass and you wouldn't have all of this mineral spent just trying to get this wall in and you, you see we're already at almost the four minute mark and he's just getting his first gateway and his expansion is just even in fact it's behind OGS the wind that's that's incredible I mean I just don't see what tester is trying to do with this strat I just don't think this is the map to do it on now we can see he's got this spawning pool out. He's, he's, let's see, he's got this early, ex or no, for Zerg it's not really an early expansion. It's quite, it's actually quite a late expansion. Um, but I, I just have a feeling that this, this build is just gonna so easily uh, counter this because he got the pool on ten. He's getting a very, very quick he or hive, no, layer. God, I am just stumbling all over myself today. And 
Tester just doesn't really have anything to answer. If he got four Zerglings out, they would just absolutely run amok. They could run by this cannon so easily and just... Well, obviously, the amount of probes he has would be able to kill all the, the Zerglings. And this is absolutely beautiful placement of this Overlord right here because he knows this fast expand is down. And he knows that Tester doesn't have vision because this Overlord is just barely on high ground. So uh, Tester has absolutely no idea that the wind knows everything that he's doing. That's probably why why he went for this early layer, because he knows he has plenty of time to put out a perfect counter to this, which I imagine he'd probably be going for quick mutas, or maybe a baneling drop, or something to exploit this missing this missing territory right here that he doesn't have vision on. Oh, in fact, he is moving this Overlord to into position. I love this play from the wind. He knows that he cannot afford that much vision when he only has, when he's going for such a fast expand, such a ballsy expand on this map. Now, I also, I, I don't really like the fact that uh, the wind is not connecting his main and his natural with creep right now. This, it, it almost seems, and he has absolutely no drones right now on his main. This is very interesting. He's getting speed. He's getting a Nidus network. Oh, that's what he's doing. I see. I see what you're doing, Wind. He's just going heavy Ling build into a Nidus. Probably going to put his Nidus right here in this perfect unvisioned spot and just run in and kill all of these probes. And here we finally can see what Tester was planning to do with this early wall in heavy macro build is go two gate or two Stargate into either Mass Phoenixes or uh, Void Ray Harass. Probably going to get Flux Veins. We'll see. And eight, now, just now, seven minutes in the game, does does Tester finally finish this wall? I really, really don't like this build. These cannons just seem like such wasted money to me that could be spent on units, another gateway, anything. He's just, he's putting everything onto a gamble that, I mean, could be scouted at any time. And here comes the Nidus Network. Oh, this is going to be so devastating. Oh, this is absolutely going to ruin Tester's day. Getting that, the fastest Nidus Worm I've seen. These Stargates, if they don't get, well, they, he's training two uh, Phoenixes, so this, even if he gets two Phoenixes out, the, the serious amount of Lings is just going to do nothing. And, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to see how to shut a game down in eight minutes, this is it. There is nothing Tester can do. He has zero production. This is completely undefended because these are two, these are his only defense. This is GG for Tester. What a quick, extremely well played game for OGS to win. That was exactly how you need to do it. And look at that, even putting a creep tumor down, putting his queen through the Nidus Worm just to lay a creep tumor down and then running her back in. Beautiful play. Now, Tester has not left yet, so he's got to be betting on these pylon or these photon cannons protecting, but there are just so many lings. There is nothing he can do against this. Yeah, that is that is game over. He's just in panic mode with four warp gates. This is this is over. What a beautiful early Nidus Worm. And there's the GG. Yeah, I just really don't like the placement of this wall on this map. I I think it was a bad decision to try and Air. The wall, He first of all, he walled off in the wrong position. If he wanted a wall, he could have put a pylon here, a gateway here, a nexus here, a cannon here, and he would have had the wall off, and he wouldn't have had to spend money on the forge, or, well, he would have had to have the forge to, to get the gateway, or the photon cannons. But, I don't know. I really didn't like Tester's play very, or, yeah, Tester's play very much in this match. But, I've been Uber Boober. And I'm going to go ahead and cast game to you. Goodbye.